Hello, welcome back. I messed up again on my uh, recording. I meant to do a video of harvesting beans and planting trees. And it was the bean herbs that I messed up on the uh, videoing again. But I got to editing the footage for tree planting. <clears throat> and I found I had enough to make a video with just the tree planting anyway. So here you are, here's the necessary trees that I had to plant. Hope you enjoy, and thank you for watching. Tree planting, let's get on to this, shall we? I've been uh, planning on doing this now for three days. Well, I planned on doing it three days ago, I should say. I have one. Two living black locusts there. Yeah, none of the others are alive. We'll bring those two up and plant where uh, two of the others are dead up above. See, this is why it kind of it's good to clean up all these sticks and them up into habitat piles because when you get walking through your forest and you're tripping up into things. Figured I just needed a little shovel for this. And since I just planted that here, was it last year? The year before? Year before, wasn't it? should be able to get a hold of it. I heard a little bit of moisture in there. And these are, these are quite moist right now. You see, this is the nice thing about using the um, milk curtains. After all, the milk curtains goes quite soft, and I can pull off the milk curtain, and this is what I got. So I can just stick this down in the ground now, and it won't even know it's been moved. Tomorrow we're getting rain, so. It should be okay. And of course, put the sticks back around. And just up from it, there was one right here. But it didn't survive, so I'll try again. Podzols or some name like that, typical uh, soil in the boreal forest. You just pull that off like that. Got some large roots that were starting to wrap around there. Well, I can pull that out like that. Look at there. I'm trying to stuff some of the organic matter that's on top of the soil down around that root ball so that when it rains, That'll absorb some more water because this soil don't absorb a lot of water. Put the sticks back and hope it grows.
Now I have three spice bush here. That one was in a bigger container. So he should do well. There's that one. I got four spice bush by the looks of that. I have this little one here as well. So, I have one spice bush down here already. I wonder if I should put another one here. Let me think for a minute. So, spice bush is an understory species. To grow 6 to 12 feet, depending on the conditions. And about the same amount of spread. It is best grown in a partial shade, but a place that gets a little bit of sun. Um, because with a little bit of sun, it will be more branched and uh, produce more productive in the way of berries. You can put it in a deeper shade, but then it'll usually just grow up as one or two single shoots. So, I'll back up. You see, here's the big maple, and then the uh, bed that I'm putting chamomile and California poppy in and we've got that other pear tree there this spot here they said it'd be nice to plant it along a stream or a pond as well and of course this spot fills all the requirements it is partial shade it does get some sun during the day and it will continue to because I'm only going to come out from that pond out 10 feet. I want it to start to go up into a forest, right? So this bed will probably be open enough to grow flowers as long as I'm here. And so if I put this, remember, if I put it down right here. If it grows to 12 feet, it'll be just up in those branches, those lower branches right there. So it would close off this area and the pond would be just behind it. It says that it doesn't grow thick enough to prevent undergrowth. So it will be hanging out over this bed, but it won't prevent the flowers from growing there. So I've decided to put the biggest spice bush right there. I have you on the small tripod, so that's why you're so low and I don't know if you can see my head there or not right now. That's that line that I got going down to the by the fence. Rocky as usual. Not quite deep enough. There we go. There we go. But I'm going to get something. Some of the compost that the rodents had uh, pulled out from the compost bin. Okay, out of the way. I'm going to put that there and hopefully I remember to put uh, some grass clippings around it uh, very soon. Understory, they say. Well, I should be able to plant them right here. Just pick three places. I got three more. And let them fend for themselves. When I get that tool I plan on getting, I'd 
be able to control these alders. And as for the rest, uh, well, they'll grow up, but the, the spice bush should do just fine among them. Let's check something over here. Yeah, you see these sticks here? This is where one of the Russian mulberry was planted and it didn't survive. So I'll put one down there. And maybe for now I'll find the places where the other mulberries were placed. And I'll plant them there. So, I have one planted there that right now it's getting sun. But as you see, it's on the north side of these trees. So, a little bit of shade. And I'll turn around. I'll go over through here. June and July, I guess half of August, that one will be, will be getting quite a bit of sun. And we go way over here, and it's the smallest one. That one would be getting the most, most shade of all. So this is where the row of Russian mulberry was closest to what was the edge of the forest there. But now, as you know, the trees have been growing like crazy in the last few years. So it's getting grown right in. And that one will be basically partial shade. And if I don't keep trees away from it, it's going to be full shade before long. Now, I have nine seaberry, uh, not seaberry, uh, Siberian pea shrub. They're still in their little small containers. And what I thought about doing, this is the bed that I just sifted out, is to put them two and two. That would make four down, right? And maybe put one of the other ones elsewhere. And let them grow a little bigger. I can still interplant them right now with beets, carrot, turnip, things like that. So I'm not losing a bed if I put them in there. You can see how the ground slopes with that, with the uh, gimbal holding the phone level. And you can see the actual slope of the land. Now, I shouldn't have to uh, work very hard to get these planted. Back the mulch. I'll do just nicely and it's a long ways from being root bound. And the plan is to, let, to do like I did with the sea berry and let them grow up a little bit and then transplant them afterwards. Lay them out. This is why I stopped making these. I found out that the hot glue doesn't hold up to water. When you apply water, it just falls apart. So I'm going to have to come up with another idea. I'm thinking about maybe a strip of fiberglass down each corner using the fiberglass cloth and then the fiberglass resin soaking it, right? I'll plant them just like that and like I said, get them growing and once they're growing they're up, say about this eye I'll dig them up Take them bare root and move them to, or to their forever own.
And I missed the potato. They should be just fine there. Now, remember this one? Let's see where he's growing from. That's all dead material there. Growing from a rather thick uh, stalk here. See, that's a nice, uh, thicker than what the rest were. Not much moisture in that soil. Poke around here and see if anything else is growing. I mean, any other uh, kiwi. See, that was a rather thick stalk there, but it's completely dead. Also completely dead. So we had three that were alive, and uh, then I broke that piece off to one and it didn't grow back, remember, so maybe we've only got two now, but we'll take that one over and plant it where the other two are. Now see, the issue with these, my understanding is that you need a male and a female, and uh, well, we don't know what they are until they flower. Which is why I had them growing in that raised bed. Lots of moisture here. Waiting to see if they will grow enough for me to see a flower on them. And then be, t be able to tell which is which. Now, we might need a big shovel, because we got to move this, and it's got almost every one of its leaves lost, probably due to lack of water. We've had drier years, but they were also cooler, so we didn't have so much problem with water. This year, just hot and dry. We're going to move that over there where the head of the shovel is. Now will I be able to just dig a hole with the shovel? Or will I need that pick? Huge boulder there. Now, how easy is it going to be to pop this out? Down on the rock. Oh, there used to be another cherry tree here that the moose ate many years ago. Doesn't help to have all that grass growing in among it.
there's a little bit of moisture there. But not much. This is a different soil. And I think it will grow different here, even though it's only like six, eight feet apart. Current to growing well right there. Um, I used to have a red current just the other side of that raised bed, but the we had a bug infestation one year, and year after year, the infestation killed it. It would have been growing just as good as the white one. The white one down the other end survived bug infestation. And finally, got his half back together and grew up into the bush that you see there now. So, that's going to be like that now for the rest of the year. We'll have to wait until next year to see how it grows. Don't tell me I forgot to hit the record button. Anyway, I ignored that there used to be a sea berry growing here, a male sea berry. I took out the sticks and I mowed over the grass and I got this hole dug. Now I want to take one of these. And you know, I think I want to take that one with as, as the uh, wood sorrel growing around it. And plant right there. I had to put my gloves on to get that stinging nettle over there. I'm going to be regretting it before long. Well, it was just some fine roots, roots that grow at the bottom of the tree. Now I can just do that. I like that wood sorrel, so I'm not going to do anything with that. See, this is what I was waiting for for trees to get about this size and uh, so I tried these pale things and well I mean it worked for these so it might work for other ones as well right now I have the Siberian pea shrub planted over there and that'll be okay uh, but uh, this seems to have worked too so we shall see now what do I want? Which one do I want to take next? I think it's this one in here, and he's in the back, so I'm going to move this one to the side if I can. Somewhere. Somehow to the side. Yeah. You see, the pot was right full of roots, but it was on a place where it couldn't get its roots down through any crack. I gotta look around in front of the camera now to see where I'm at this position. You see those little white nodules on there? So that's uh, nitrogen fixing nodules. I'm gonna bring this over. Actually, I'll take you with me. Remember, that's the Myra Bland cherry plum. And I was going to plant it out where I had the um, what did I have there? Oh, blueberry plant. That was what I had there last. from this, this one because I don't want that growing there.
There, that one I'll do fine just, just like that. Oh. Put the worm back there. And it looks like this one here oh. Okay, so I'll move you back It's still alive. This is a female a female sea berry. I think that's the only one I have though. There's four out here on the end. And if my memory serves me correctly, only one of them is alive. Yeah. So I only got the one, but that's good because in reality I only want two down here anyway. I have to uh, think for a bit to make sure I put it where I want to put it. Right here. This is the asparagus. The first uh, male plant I planted was right there. So yeah, I'm going to have the Asparagus growing up around the sea berry, sea buckthorn. As children, we ate so many of these. So, this is vetch, a relative of the peas. And the pea aphid, that's a little black aphid, it would much rather go for vetch than it will go for peas. So, I certainly don't want to eradicate it because, well, if there's no vetch, I did see those black aphids around, but always on vetch, never on my peas. When I mean, the pods dry, they dry out like that, but uh, they're edible when they're still green. So I got one coming up right there, one coming up right there, and I'm gonna make a hole right here. Okay, so there we are, a little, uh, well, it's, I guess you didn't see as much, because it's, let me put that there like that. Now you can see it. That, I mean, the other one grew really fast once I, Add it in the clear, so it's just a matter of me taking the time and keeping that in the clear, and it'll grow like crazy. Now, there's one last tree that's got to be moved because that can't grow beside the house.
how easy is it going to be to get this out basically i mean this is um right out close to the edge of there's crushed stone going all the way down to the foot the footing there One would think I should be able to wiggle that shovel down and get that tree out fairly easy. Yeah. Well, get new there. And now I have a bare root tree. Let's see about going to plant it somewhere. As you might remember, this is shoots from those uh, couple of big aspen that I cut down over there. And I want to keep the aspen out of there. Uh, I'll cut down all of these and grow other trees that's going to be more of the final thing. I mean, naturally, uh, aspen is one of the primary species. Anyway, one of the first species that grows up when the uh, forest is regenerating. Um, but since I'm growing the forest and planting, planting out trees, we don't really have use for aspen. There's no spruce growing up out here spruce back there and I've got maples and cherry over there uh, and you've seen there's a lot of cherry back there there's the occasional cherry out here but not much so I'm going to try to put a hole down right here to plant that spruce if I had done it last year now he would have been much smaller and it would have been easier So far, it's going okay. Way easier than I thought it was going to be. Now these roots were spread out down uh, where it was growing, but I can't make a hole out big enough for that, so I'm going to have to spin it, get its roots down in that hole, hold it up while I put this loose soil down around it. And the soil then will fall right in among the roots. There's a little bit of moisture there. But I'm going to bring up a bucket of water and pour down there to make sure its roots are wet. And now I've got the trees planted that I needed to have planted and I'm hoping to do some more planting of some other trees I have before things freeze up but I've got what is necessary done so once again thank you for watching hit the like button subscribe if you're not subscribed and we'll see you in the next video